I've recently started wearing an aura ring. And as a result, I've become fascinated by my heart rate variability, or HRV. Today I'll be sharing what exactly HRV is and what the science says around good and bad measures of HRV. I'll also be giving you a comprehensive list of what you can do to improve your HRV. Let's get started, shall we? Well, hello, beautiful people, and welcome to the Project Joyful Podcast. I'm your host, Tracy Tutte, your medical herbalist and high-performance coach. So, hey, Project Joyful isn't just about being happy. It's about consciously creating a life you love. It's about remembering how to reconnect with your soul-centered joy. You know, that joy that comes from doing what you love, from living on purpose, and from being in a life that allows you to experience deep joy moment by moment. So, hey, let's get started, shall we? Heart rate variability, or HRV, is a metric which measures the amount of time between each heartbeat and the variation in those timings. Now, your body is this wonderful, constantly adapting marvel. It does a bunch of stuff that keeps you alive without you even knowing it. Things like breathing, for example. So, the system that automatically takes care of all of those crucial housekeeping tasks, it's called your autonomic nervous system. And it's got two parts to it. It's got the sympathetic nervous system and it's got the parasympathetic nervous system. Think of them as two sides of a coin, if you will. The sympathetic nervous system comes to the fore when you're reacting to a perceived threat. So when you're head down, delivering to a deadline, when you're exercising moderately to vigorously, and also when you perceive something to be threatening, so something that causes you to be afraid, for example. It's your fight or flight response that triggers a physiological cascade so that your heart beats faster, your respiratory rate increases, so that oxygenated blood is prioritised to your arms and legs so you can either fight or get out of there. And then the non-prioritised tasks like digesting lunch, well, they're just put on hold because they're not needed right now. And then when we decide it's time to stand down, the parasympathetic nervous system comes to the fore. So our heart rate and our breathing slow, and the immediate repair work within our body begins, and digestion turns back on. These two systems are working interchangeably throughout the day and night, and you're not even aware that it's happening most of the time. And one way of measuring this interplay is through heart rate variability. Your body is designed to constantly adapt so that increasing and slowing down your heartbeat, depending on whether you're fueled by the sympathetic or the parasympathetic nervous system, it creates a lot of variability in the timing of your heartbeat. So a high HRV score is generally speaking a good thing because it shows that you're responding to the stimuli of your day by moving in and out of fight or flight or rest and digest. Now you're probably thinking, so what's a good number for HRV? Just like your body, HRV is highly individualized and it's influenced by a wide range of factors. There isn't a good number per se, but there is a good trend and that trend is going up over time. So what does it mean if you have a low HRV? Well, chances are you're overly relying on one system and it's usually fight or flight. We're very rarely too relaxed in this day and age. And our HRV declines as we get older, so that's why it's really important to review your HRV trend. Things that can reduce HRV, they include poor sleep quality or not enough sleep, overtraining or even a one-off overdoing it at the gym. And it's okay, it's all perfectly normal, your body's designed to deal with it, but the trick is to give your body the space to do that. Now a downwards dip in your HRV trend, it could be a sign that your body is fighting off an underlying illness, for example. Also, alcohol and a diet low in nutrient-dense foods can also reduce your HRV, as well as being dehydrated. So how can you use HRV to support your health and well-being? Well, the first step is awareness. When you first start wearing your device, give it a couple of weeks of consistent measuring so that you know what's normal for you. Notice the trend. Is it the same? Is it going up or is it going down? 
Use it to stage your workout schedule and recovery sessions and lighter workouts until you're back to your normal range. If you want to improve your HRV, start playing with things that can increase the HRV, but introduce them one at a time so that you can measure its impact. So the best place to start is with your sleep. Now it's not just about a consistent bedtime and wake up time, look at the number of hours you're getting as well. Is it around eight hours, maybe more? Look at your sleep cycles. You'll move through alert to REM to deep sleep in around 19 minutes and these cycles will repeat through the night. So if you're waking up tired, check you're getting enough deep sleep. Play with increasing your fitness and build in more focused recovery sessions than you're used to. Heart rate variability is a wonderful tool for noticing how the way you're living is supporting or detracting by adding work for your body. You'll be amazed at how just one thing can tip the balance. It can boost your immune system, it can improve your mood, and it can help you to be more resilient. Here's to HRV. Sending you lots of love. Bye for now. Hey, thanks for listening to today's podcast. Can I ask you a favour? If our conversation spoke to you today, could you please take a moment to leave a five-star review? Your review will help people discover this podcast and together we can create a world where there's even more love and more laughter. And if you want to hear more from the Project Joyful podcast, just click the subscribe button. Bye for now.